Welcome to the Veta Foods Health Show with Dr. J. Apte. And today we have a great topic. Today we're going to be talking about oral health, which is not talked about a lot. And we're going to actually talk about different tools that Ayurvedic medicine practices or Ayurvedic health practices for oral health. And then we're going to get into the very misunderstood topic on what are good carbs, bad carbs, how they get processed, etc. So thank you for joining me today. Yeah, I feel really happy to talk about so many different things. And Carly, we are doing a great work of helping people to be healthy. Exactly. So yeah. I'd love for you to share some of the Ayurvedic ways uh-huh. of oral health. I know one of them in particular is oil pulling. So I'd love for you to start where you'd like to start, but I'm really curious about the oil pulling. Okay, so let's and begin with like oil. what that is. <laughs> Yeah, so the oil pulling, these days it has become very popular because everybody is talking about coconut oil is so good for your health and all this. But Ayurveda has been talking about oil pulling for thousands of years. And what we do, it's a simple procedure. In the morning when you wake up, you just swish your mouth with one tablespoon of either sesame oil or coconut oil. Uh, So generally in Ayurveda, we recommend more of a sesame oil because there are multiple benefits of using sesame oil. So we know uh, in the uh, mouth, we mainly have uh, 32 teeth and teeth is a part of the bone which is related to the calcium. And sesame seed being very rich in calcium, so sesame oil is very beneficial for this oil pulling. Yes, anybody can use coconut oil or sesame oil, but in Ayurvedic text it is mentioned about sesame oil. So take one tablespoon of sesame oil in your mouth in the morning, swish it in your mouth, just move it around all directions to the right, to the left, up and down and all, and switch it for like good 20 to 15 minutes. And Carly, it's really surprising that when we spit that oil out, there is no oil absolutely. There is all the froth and all these toxins in our mouth and all the plaque in our mouth and all. So we just spit it out. Then you can brush your teeth and you will really, really see your mouth so clean, like a whistling clean. We always talk about our teeth should be whistling clean. So there are many benefits and among those are your teeth become white, naturally white. There are no chemicals used. Then and why they become white is because there is a lot of, lot of plaque buildup in our mouth because we do not rinse our mouth every time we eat. And the food particles stay in the mouth. They start building the plaque on the teeth and the Sesame oil or coconut oil being the fat in nature, most of these plaques are fat soluble. And you know, many of the things either are soluble in water or in different oils or fats. So oil being a fat, it removes all those plaques, it removes all those toxins. And another important benefit is your gums and teeth become very strong. So I'd like to go a little bit into further into that little piece about the gums. I don't think people realize, like, if you got an infection, that it actually goes into the gums, can travel. So explain to them that when we're swishing the oil around, that actually does penetrate the gums and and how that, you know, draws out the toxins. So that, it's like the skin is the biggest organ of the body and absorbs. Mm-hmm. I don't think people realize how much our gums absorb. See, the first thing, anything going in our system is through the mouth, you know. And when we are chewing the food and all, so gums hold your teeth strong. And when you are chewing that food with the teeth, naturally some tiny particles go in your cavities and in between teeth when we floss and all that. And because it is very important that we rinse our mouth after every time we eat which we do not do. Even we eat our lunch, we eat our dinner, and it's not in our culture here in US to rinse your mouth every time. But that is very, very hygienic because get, you get rid of food particles 
when the mouth is clean the bacteria do not grow and that's what when you switch that oil when you take time it's not only kind of just rinsing for a minute or two but switching that oil throughout your mouth for like 10 15 minutes it really penetrate through your teeth and it strengthens your gums so it is very important to take that much of a time and do it almost every day in the doing it in the morning is very important so now people that are starting to get what they call periodontitis, um, yeah. you know, will that actually help reverse that? Because I know you can reverse that. It, it can, because let me also tell you, so sometimes people have this crooked teeth, or the teeth are moving and shaking and all. So because the gums become strong, that they can hold the teeth uh, firmly. And that's why many of these oral problems just go away if you do this preventive tip. Let me give you the example. Suppose your uh, room door is squeaking. What do you do? You just put a drop of oil. Right? The same thing when the oil lubricates everything. Oil being the fat, it cleanses all the tissues around and it lubricating the teeth. Also, it just cleanses your tongue, cleanses and lubricates your inside of your mouth. Because a lot of people also have like an ulcer sore in their gum, in their tea, in their cheek, inside. So that also this oil heals. So this has like a multiple benefits and it's a great habit. People who have done it have given positive testimonials about this oil pulling. So that is a wonderful way to keep your oral health. Another benefit, let me tell you. Do you know, Carly? that our each tooth is connected to different organs. So we have... Yeah, I actually have a map. I, um, uh, yeah. It's like an a, a infographic where they have each tooth and they actually connect to what tooth is connected to what organ. I thought it was fascinating. It is fascinating. Also, each tooth is connected to different vertebra. You know, we have 32 teeth and we have 32 vertebrae and we have multiple organs in the body. So each tooth is connected to the vertebra, each tooth is connected to the organ. So when you are keeping your teeth healthy, it's as if you are keeping all your system healthy. By Because in the subtle body, all these organs and everything is connected. And that's why when you keep your mouth clean, that is also going to help your whole system uh, and all the organs in the body going to be in the healthy state. So it's a good habit. Another so thing I want to make... Go ahead. I, there's just one more thing I'd like to ask you because it's an, also a new thing that people are doing. And you mentioned the tongue. What is your? What do you think about the tongue blades? You know where people use the tongue, tongue scraping. Blade? Tongue scraping. Yes. Yeah. Tongue, tongue scraping is very important. And you know, in Ayurveda and in Chinese medicine, we use the tongue as a diagnostic tool. What is happening in the whole digestive system? We can tell by looking at person's tongue. And many times you will see that tongue is very white and coated. There may be different kind of maps on the tongue. There could be different lines on the tongue. There may be tremors on the tongue. So everything on the tongue tells us what is happening deep down in the body. So instead of doing all these MRI and CT scan and all the tests, we always look at the pulse, look at the tongue, look at the eyes and all that. So tongue also has important thing, it has the taste buds on the tongue. That you notice the taste of the food, that on the tip there is the taste bud for the sweet taste. That's why we lick the ice cream. Uh, all the sour and salty taste buds are on the side of the tongue. And the bitter taste bud, uh, the taste buds for the bitter taste are on the back of the tongue. And when you eat very spicy food like jalapenos and hot uh, spice, onion and all that, it just kind of irritates your stomach mucosa. And there is one more taste called like an astringent taste. It puckers your mouth. So let me give you an example. Suppose if you eat like a raw banana, which is not right, and you eat that, and it just kind of pulls your all the oral cavity, and you won't be able to even speak because everything kind of swings. That is the astringent taste. So Ayurvedically, all these tastes have important function in our system. And the taste is a great organ to tell us what the taste we are consuming 
and another important thing is from the taste from the dryness or the moistness of the taste we can tell how much is the fluid balance in the body it's very fascinating because the tongue is related to the water element in our system and like previously we were talking about there is almost 3/4 like 70 75% of water in the body it becomes too much we can see it from the tongue if it is less we can see it from the tongue we can tell our palate also becomes very dry when we are very thirsty so the tongue is important it has lot of blood supply to the tongue that's why it looks very red and when there is so much inflammation the tongue becomes like a bloody red the person cannot tolerate any spicy food or anything that we call as a excess pitta condition the heat condition and when there is lot of white coating on the tongue people have to scrape that white coating on the tongue it is also good habit to scrape tongue every day after brushing your teeth and if there is lot of undigested food and toxins in your system that white scum comes back but that also is a good measure or a indicator of how good or bad your digestive system is functioning so observing the tongue is a great diagnostic tool in ayurveda it's just so fascinating thank you for sharing that cuz i know um i just recently you know this past year started doing the tongue scraping and i um, you know then look at youtube's and all the stuff i mean so it's just always fascinating all the taste buds and the you know the teeth being connected to organs i yeah. think it's just very all fascinating so i'm really glad that we covered that topic cuz a lot of people don't the other one thing more, i would one more thing i want to add to this there is so much more we can talk about i know i know <laughs> we always use different kinds of mouthwash instead if you just use ayurvedically bitter taste is very very cleansing and astringent taste also is strengthening to our gums and teeth and that's why ayurved many times recommends to use the neem toothpaste or there is one toothpaste called babul that uh, the babul is a type of a tree and which is very astringent in taste and it kind of strengthens your teeth and gum that's why instead of using any sweet tasting toothpaste we always recommend this bitter and astringent tasting toothpaste and we also recommend to gargle or uh, use the mouthwash which is also very bitter and astringent everything is for our health everything is for the oral health if you have a lot of bacteria in the mouth naturally you are going to ingest those causing some problem so if you keep your oral cavity completely clean you will see really you start becoming more healthy okay so one last question i have what are your thoughts on cuz i've heard this before is taking grapefruit seed extract and putting like one drop in water and gargling with that because that 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 is like you said it's astringent exactly. um anti anti microbial um yes. agent so is that also would that be a good thing to gargle with just putting because it's very obviously strong when you buy the concentrated if you just put exactly. one or two drops in with water and gargling with that exactly that's perfect or um, you might have heard the herbal combination called prefala we talked about it for cleansing so you can also make a prefala decoction and you can gargle with prefala decoction or prefala tea and you will really see your teeth and gums becoming very strong and the overall when you use this bitter astringent taste for the mouth wash your whole mouth feels very clean and when you feel that cleanliness you don't want to eat all the time you just want to keep your mouth clean and that is also one way of putting less food in your system yeah i found i just recently found an all natural grapefruit um yeah. Rinse. and it does it has it also has the um the grape seed extract oil on it so that's why i asked that question um okay, so okay. And all the fruit peel all the fruit peel has astringent things if you have some mint leaves in your backyard you can just have mint leaf tea and just gargle with that it isn't it doesn't matter what you use but as long as you know the basic concept of using the bitter or astringent taste beautiful Yeah. So now we're going to tackle another and I you and I could spend hours talking because we just both are very passionate about this about being healthy. 
So yeah. the other topic I'd love to dive into, because this is also something that a lot of people are confused about. We talked about bad fats and good fats last time, which is a very big confusion for people. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about carbs, because a lot of people are very misunderstood that carbs convert to sugar or complex carbs, you know, all the craziness about carbs. So yeah. let's get to, especially to you and I are very passionate, but also about helping people to have diabetes or, or what, or as we would call it, is a sugar conscious lifestyle or, you know, speak conscious <laughs> about the sugar intake, right? The Ayurvedic lifestyle. Um, let's, let's give people some real information about what are carbs, how many calories are in carbs, how it processes, how, why it turns into sugar and all that wonderful stuff. Okay. So like the last time we also mentioned that there are three main food groups. That is the carb and the protein and the fat. And they are called macronutrients because that mainly consists, our whole food consists of carb and protein and fat. And carb being the number one food ingredient because it gives energy to the body. There is four calories of uh, four calories in one gram of complex carb. And so protein also has four calories and fat has nine calories per gram. So we eat less amount of fat. And if you know, Carly, like uh, um, previously our food pyramid recommended almost like eating 45 to 60% of the carb calories coming from the carbohydrates. And which is very important because that is kind of the basic nutrient we eat. And if you see around the world, people's main staple is rice or wheat or some kind of grain because those grains are very, very important. And do you know the important fact that people go on Atkins diet or high protein diet, no carb diet, but subtle organs in the body like a brain they can use energy only in the form of glucose. So you cannot avoid carbs 100%. You have to have some amount of carbs in your diet. But what carbs you consume makes all the difference. So we always call or talk about there are good carbs and bad carbs and all that. So remember carbs, when it is broken down, it becomes a sugar, it becomes glucose. When the protein is broken down, it becomes amino acid. And when the fat is broken down, it becomes fatty acid. So all the complex, all the carbohydrates which you are going to eat are going to broken down into sugar. But how fast they are broken down is very, very important. Because when you are using, we call like a good carb, that is a complex carbohydrate. So car carbohydrate has like a three parts. One is the starch. Well, one could be fiber and the third one is just the sugar that is in our sugar in the table sugar or all the candies and cookies and cakes and everything we eat it has just kind of the simple sugar but though they do not have any fiber they are very easy to digest because they are glucose so body increases your blood sugar very quickly and that's why your your blood sugar spikes instantaneously which is very very bad for diabetes especially and we have to think about because the rate of diabetes, the rate of obesity is increasing with an alarming speed. So we really have to pay attention to what we eat. And that's what the good carbs we always talk about is the complex carb. Complex carbohydrate, it comes either from the long grains like wheat or rice or barley or oats, etc. All the whole grain and or it could come from the legumes and beans like chickpeas or uh, um, black eyed peas and all those things. And uh, yes, and it can come also from the, it comes from the vegetables and fruits. So among all these things, complex carbs are very important, which also has a lot of fiber in it. Okay, because what does fiber do? Really speaking, we do not digest the fiber. But fiber gives the bulk to our food. So we get the sensation that we are full. It also helps us to eliminate regularly and every day, which is the key to your health. It is very important that everybody has good bowel movement at least once a day. 
that is the sign of the health. Otherwise, they have a lot of health issues and all that. But there are few grains like barley, for example. It has soluble fiber. And that soluble fiber, when you eat any product with barley, you are ingesting a lot of fiber and your digestive enzymes can digest that fiber and that's why you feel full for a long period of time. So suppose you eat your lunch around noon, till maybe 6 or 7 o'clock, you may not feel hungry. So you don't end up eating that bag of chips or cookies or crackers and all those kind of things. So it is very important that you consume good quality of carbs. Some portion of your, depending on your body constitution, the amount of carbs will vary in your diet, but everybody should consume those complex carbs. I'd also like to talk a little bit about, because we were talking about sugar spiking, a lot of yeah. people don't understand or even know what the glycemic index is. So I'd yeah. love to explain that every food has a glycemic index yeah. um, and let them know what that is. And okay. That is part of the sugar spiking. Having mm -hmm. and actually, when we do the blog post, I'm going to include a glycemic chart with yeah. some numbers and also show a graph that, that okay. we're talking. About. Okay, so glycemic index is a good marker for diabetes because glycemic index is how fast your your sugar spikes at the highest level. So generally, for so many years, your normal range of blood sugar was between 80 and 120. Now that range has changed from 80 to 100 milligrams of sugar per 100 ml of your blood. And when you are eating complex carbs, it's slowly because it has a lot of fiber, soluble or insoluble. So it needs to be digested. It takes time. So slowly it increases your blood sugar and it plateaus it. And then body is using the blood sugar so it comes down. And that Slowly increasing blood sugar, having it is called having low glycemic index. And generally, they measure the glycemic index. The numbers are from 1 to 55, it's called low glycemic index. From 55 to 75, it's called medium glycemic index. And then the high glycemic index and all that. So for diabetes, obesity and all, we prefer to have low glycemic index food. And for that, Barley being the number one choice for the lowest glycemic because barley has the uh, glycemic index is 25. There is nothing lower than barley. And barley has a uh, fiber in all the parts, uh, on the cover, in the grain, and also in the endoderm. And that's a, when you eat a variety of grains. Even there is one Indian earth, uh, uh, grain called jawar that is called sorghum. It also has low glycemic index. So there are some, uh, these days, uh, quinoa has become very popular. So quinoa also has low glycemic index. So people who have diabetes or who are pre-diabetic, they should consume more of these grains which have low glycemic index. And so that's the other thing I always tell people is like, we get in like potatoes, for example, or I would say the white foods. So white rice is going to be much higher in index than brown rice or quinoa or like we were talking about or barley. Um, or all sorts of flowers. Right? Yeah. So I always tell them, stay away from anything that's white. White flour, white rice, all that. And, and in potatoes, purple potatoes have a lot more antioxidants and um, and they're lower in glycemic index and the sweet potatoes versus yeah. the white potatoes and all the other potatoes. So I think it's really fascinating when you actually look at the chart that you really yeah. see, for example, like corn is extremely high in sugar. And then you're dealing with GMO because so much corn is GMO. So yeah. it's, I think it's more educating ourselves um, about knowing what, and it, people get, oh, that's such, it's so difficult. Like I look at all these books and all these charts and I'm like, actually it's not because once you get educated, you know, so it's not like you have to think anymore. It's just like, oh yeah, okay to this you know i know these grains are, are the lower in the glycemic method i know these vegetables are lower and if i yeah. eat the whole orange i'm getting the fiber but just eat orange juice because oranges are really high on the glycemic index especially if you drink orange juice mm -hmm. however eating the whole fruit with the fiber so i think all i love what we're doing because we're really educating people on so like i'm just on the various various topics so, you know, they learn and then it's like in their system and it is at work because you are having the knowledge. And then when you go to reach for something, you're going, hmm, right? And, and one more thing, one more thing I want to add, like in the facts we talked about, 
why not buy all the store bought uh, products with high fat because they have artificially hydrogenated fat which is very carcinogenic and all that the same way most of the sweet sugary products in the market have that high fructose corn syrup and all that this is not good for our health so it is very important because hardly we do not know but our whole body is nothing but the food we eat do you know that all your skin and your blood and your muscles and your bones and your nerves everything is made up from your food so ayurvedically we say you are what you eat and what you digest so exactly. so for your health eating good food is important and the uh, main goal of all these food manufacturers is to make more money so it doesn't matter what goes in the food but if you are really conscious about creating your own health then you have to start cooking at home at least make one meal maybe a dinner or breakfast or lunch depending on your schedule and all that but you will know what is going in the food when you are cooking you put your emotions we always talk about mind body spirit connection and all that so when we are cooking our positive emotions positive energy goes in the food and as even less quantity just satisfies us so much more so it is very important to know what we are taking in our system is very healthy to create our health and i found that's very true when you cook your own meals you're you're so wrapped up in the in the chopping and the stir frying whatever you're doing you do kind of eat less because you've already gotten the aromas i mean yes you're getting kind of hungry as you're doing it however you're, you're there's a different type of and you're feeling more satiated or satisfied because it's like this whole kind of like love process of what you're doing unless of course and then here's the other part if you hate what you're doing equally it's it's just not good so if you, if you go to a lot of restaurants where these people are very stressed out and they're way overworked you know you're getting that energy so yeah. it is really fascinating. There, there's one little piece I want to tie to is we you mentioned very high fructose. I, a lot of people do not realize when it says um, fructose or it says uh, corn syrup or high fructose. Sometimes they don't say fructose. A lot of people don't realize that the fructose syrup or the corn syrup is coming from corn that is also non-GMO. A lot of people don't put those two together. So when you're yeah. buying all these syrups and everything, uh, most of all these things are coming from GMO corn. So yeah. in, in and that's just really toxic. And, and so, yeah, it, it's in our children's juices, all these high fructose corn syrups. And, and a lot of times they don't say it's corn syrup. They don't just say high fructose, you know, juice. And it's actually, it's corn syrup. Yes, yes, it is. And that's why we really have to think seriously because I get so many small children having so many variety of diseases and all that. And Ayurvedically, majority of diseases happen because of our eating food choices and our diet and our lifestyle and that's why ayurveda is very high about what goes in our system what foods we consume how many times we do it why we do it where we do it everything makes the difference if you have the same hamburger while you are driving the car running your errands has a different effect on your body than you sitting at your dining table and paying attention to the food and knowing the taste of the food and all that so we have a lot more education to do and so many things to talk about. So for today, though, I think we've given them a volume of information. And I'm really excited because I know you'll write something up that I can also include and I'll put some graphs in. Um, and that way people have references to look at. And I think next time I'd really love to talk about, um, which I'm really excited about, is the beta foods coming out. So today we talked about carbs and a little bit about sugars um, and beta foods coming out with a beautiful line of sugar conscious foods that are not just for diabetics but are also for anybody that is using to live a healthier life and i love the term sugar conscious instead of diet nobody likes to be labeled you know a diabetic or or because it ties into illness and nobody wants to you know to look at yeah. themselves ill so the sugar conscious term i absolutely love and i'm really excited to um explore that so i'm okay. really looking forward to next time please go make sure you go check out vetafoods.com and hnwellness.com which has all sorts of nuggets and tips about a plethora of Ayurvedic health tools um, we love your questions because then we know what to share with you and um, we look forward to sharing more beautiful information with you next week have a great day everyone thank you